Last Man Standing is the popular Fox sitcom starring comedian Tim Allen. Actor Jonathan Adams plays the neighbor next door. Along with his successful career in television over the years, Jonathan is sure of his priorities, faith, marriage, and family. Well, Jonathan Adams joins us now. We're so happy to have you here. I'm glad to be here again. Talk a little bit about the show and your relation, the relationship of your character to Tim Allen's character. Uh, how would you describe it? Well, um, I think we started off, first of all, as neighbors, and then as frenemies. You know that term that the, <laughs> that the, that the young people use? We, uh, we, we just really were at odds but loved each other still. And yeah. uh, that was uh, part of our relationship at first. And, uh, and I still think it has that kind of aspect to it. But we're more, we've more reconciled to the fact that we do really do care about each other. Do you think that one of the reasons people love the show so much is because uh, seeing two people who have different, come from different backgrounds, have different uh, opinions about social issues, about personal issues, but get along and care about each other is such a message needed in our culture today. It is the message it is in, the our, message. In, in our culture. I mean, uh, they don't agree socially. They don't agree politically on a lot of things. And they don't come from the, from the same kind of background. They don't uh, you know, I, he, he's never been a, lived as a black man in his entire right. life. And uh, nor have I lived as Do a white man. So, I, yeah, I, he, he hasn't. I've talked to Tim about it. He thinks he has, but he really hasn't. And um, so we, uh, he, they have totally different ideas about the world and, and where it's going to go yeah. and where they, where they fit in it. But faith and family, they have, a, they have an agreement. They have an agreement that, that those two things are incredibly important in their lives. And that's... And that's what keeps them together as, as friends. So do you think it brings a message of, I mean, I don't want to say make it too strong, but hope to people that we, we can get to this place again where we can care about each other, be civil with each other, and not agree on everything? Absolutely. I'm, I'm always hopeful for that. Yeah. I'm always hopeful for that, Terry. I think that that is a, um, just a... <sighs> we used to be able to have discourse without... Mm -hmm getting angry with each other. We used to be able to, to, to talk about issues and talk them through and compromise and find an agreement that, you know, not both sides were satisfied with, but that both sides could accept, you know, and that's not what we do anymore. Yeah. It's either it's my way or the highway. And exactly. I, and, I, and, I, and I think that we need to, to find that more here, here. In, in our politics and in our lives. Well, we're excited to hear that season eight is going to be coming in 2020, right? Right. And do, do they give you any heads up on what might be included <laughs> in that? Or, you know, uh, are you as in, in the dark as we are? I am. And I'm as excited about it as you are, yeah. you know, because I really want to see what happens. Yeah. Now, it will, we'll <laughs> that must be so weird <laughs> to get a script to find out what, oh, that's what I'm doing. Well, <laughs> you know, the producers give you some vague idea, you know, like, uh, I'll talk to Kevin and, and whatever, Kevin Abbott, uh, executive producer, and he'll, he'll give you some vague idea of what might be <laughs> happening to your character in the next season. Uh, but you don't know if that's really going to happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, if I were writing it, it wouldn't be half as funny or it would be like a tenth as funny because these people are brilliant and they know what they're doing. And I, I put my, my, my trust in them and it always comes yeah, out. Great. As, as wonderful as actors may be, good writers have to give them yeah. something wonderful yeah, to yeah, yeah. perform. Yeah, a good actor, a good writer makes a good actor look like a great actor. So you didn't grow up in a family that was strong in their faith. That kind of happened later in life for you. You met your wife and she influenced you in that regard. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. When I grew up, we were what I call CEO Christians, Christmas and Easter only. We just, <laughs> you know, the, my, my mom and dad you would dress You needed a us. new suit once yeah, a year, Yes, right? exactly. The, the, news, the, new, the, the Easter suit every year. You get that little suit, you put it on, you, you go out to church, you come Come back, and I didn't know what what was going on. Uh, yeah. But and then I did not. Um, it, then I was Christ was not a part of my life for a great mm -hmm. deal of my life uh, after I graduated, you know, high school, and after I, you know, got out of my house. Well, you. I was reading your background, and you said that you were sort of in an agnostic place, like you hadn't really embraced. Yeah, to any me, anti-Christian. You just hadn't embraced anything. Exactly. Already. To me, it was a question of, you know, at that point, it was like, well. If there is a God, what is he doing? Right. Where is if he? there is a God, where is he? 
So now answer this for me, yeah. because I understand after you made a commitment to Christ, invited him into your heart mm -hmm. and your life, that things got pretty tough for you, like for a period of time. <laughs> like, I think you might have said then, okay, God. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, well, I clearly remember um, <clears throat> 2008 after the, um, you know, what happened in 2008 with everything, the economy uh, went to, went down uh, just horribly. And actors, especially actors like me, mm -hmm. we were, it was really affecting me because it's, it's entertainment is like the first thing people kind of get rid of. Yes. And, um, the, the budgets were tight and I couldn't find a job and uh, we were going to lose our house. Wow. Been there, and done that. Uh, it was, it was pretty, pretty awful. Um, uh, I remember sitting in that house in our bedroom in the closet praying and praying, you know, to, for God to change the situation mm -hmm. and for God to, to help me get work and help me do what I needed to do to support my family and keep going. Uh, what strange was well, in that prayer, God touched my heart and he didn't change the situation. Yeah. He changed me. He allowed me to get through the situation, allowed me to get through that, mm -hmm. that time. I call it like hitting the reset button on my heart. I went from despair and anger and, and upset and the absolute lowest point of, of, mm -hmm. of emotion to just, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And it was. Mm -hmm. it, didn't, it took a while. Yes. But, yeah. you know, yeah, but, well, but it was we okay. Slowly. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, and the rest of the circumstances yeah. changed slowly around me. I mean, we did lose that house, yeah. and we did move to a different house, and we did move to a we did move to a better neighborhood that was better for my family, and I did get wow. a job that was better for me, and you know it just all started becoming better. Didn't automatically become better, but it started to become better, and but my attitude towards it was so much better. And learning uh, to trust it's a yeah. tough journey. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah, yeah, it really is. Well, we sure love what you do, and we're all looking forward to the next season, and we're so glad you're there. <laughs> Press on. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we're glad, glad to, to have you here, and we just can't wait to see what's what's coming. When you get the script, we'll find out. I oh, guess yeah, yeah, we all will. It well, it's, all, it's all new to me, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can see Jonathan Adams in Last Man Standing on Fox. It's Friday nights, 8 p.m. Great to have you with us. Glad to be here.